Morning here. We're live from the Al Emirat Cricket Ground. It's the Oman Cricket Academy on the outskirts of Muscat for this game day number one of the 2024 ACC Men's Premier Cup. We've seen a thrilling morning's cricket with both Oman and the UAE taking victories, but not by much. And we are now all set for the afternoon fixtures. We come into Group 1. It's Malaysia taking on Nepal. Andrew Leonard here with you, and a little while earlier, my colleague Mikhail Vaswamy was down with the two captains for the toss. Let's go and find out what happened. I'm here in this Group A fixture between Nepal and Malaysia in the ACC Men's Premier Cup T20-2024. I have the captains of both the teams standing alongside me. Captain of Nepal, Rohit Paudel, Captain of Malaysia, Virindeep Singh. And to adjudicate the flip of the coin, match referee Prakash Bhatt. Home team will be Nepal. Rohit, you'll be flipping the coin. Virindeep, you'll be calling. Heads, it is Virindeep. You can come forward. You won the toss. What have you decided and why? Uh, I think we'll have to look, uh, we'll bat first. I think uh, because it's going to be the second match for the day, so I think the wicket might get slightly slower towards the second inning. So hopefully uh, bat first and put up a good score on the board and uh, try to defend that score. Right, what's the kind of total now you're looking at that now that you're batting first? Look, I think um, from the first game, I think uh, the wicket did get slightly better in the second innings, but I think towards the end of the day it might get slightly slower. That's our view on it. So I think uh, something around 160, 170 should be all right on this wicket. Enjoying leadership and uh, your role as a captain, combatter and all-rounder. You've, you've really done well in recent times. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just whenever I step onto the field, I try to do my best as a, as a player, you know, for Malaysia most importantly. And of course, the captaincy is a added responsibility. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, uh, my contribution as a player is more important. So yeah, I try to do that. The, I try to do my best for the team all the time. One thing your team has worked on in recent times to the build-up of this event? Uh, I think the approach uh, on, on our betting, I think the intent that we want to, uh, uh, you know, bet with. I think because uh, at the end of the day, it's about the process that we believe in and we want to stick to uh, the, you know, positive approach of, of betting. So we'll try to do that. Right. Good luck. All the very best. Thank you so much. Right, Rohit, what would you have done had you won the toss? Uh, we were looking to uh, bat first, uh, especially looking at the condition. I, I think uh, later on the stage, uh, it will uh, slow down a little bit, little bit. So, yeah, we're looking to bat. Looks a good surface. You must have seen the previous match as well. What's the kind of total you want to restrict your opposition on? Uh, looking at this uh, condition and wicket and ground, I think uh, anything around 160, 170 uh, would be a good, uh, good score. So, yeah. Your team has done well in recent times. You've travelled to India, had a good stint there at Wapi as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. It was a very good preparation for us uh, before coming here. And I think both the teams were very good, uh, competitive teams. And yeah, I think as a team, we are well prepared for this tournament. Right, versatile all across. Wish you the very best. You'll have played some great cricket in recent times. Continue the good work. Thank you. Right, so the news from the centre is that Malaysia have won the toss and they have decided to bat first. So news from the toss, Malaysia. Not certain as to what they wanted to do, but deciding to have a bat. You see Virindeep Singh there, recently in state of captain, one of their best players. And there's the two starting 11s. You can see there, not in batting order by any stretch, but with 14-man squads, we've got three to miss out from both of the starting 11s. No Anil Hafiz, no Kizar Hayat, and no Zubaydi Zulkifle, which is a bit of a surprise given he's usually pretty good up at the top of the order for Malaysia. And then Pratish GC, the left-arm seamer, Bibek Kumar Yadav and Anil Kumar Sa are the three to miss out for Nepal. Interesting to see what batting order they go with. No doubt it'll be Asif Sheikh and Kushal Bertel up the top, but from there it's been a bit of a movable feast throughout their preparation series. Couple of games against the Irish Wolves, and then a really good SMS Friendship Cup in India, which they got their hands on more silverware, Monty Desai's men. That's where they've come directly from. Only flew in yesterday. No training session for them, and straight into action. And you can already probably hear the Nepal fans. A couple of hundred have gathered here at the Oman Cricket Academy to give us what will be a really good atmosphere for this afternoon's game as we see Group A come into action now for the first time. And for Malaysia, they are all set, ready to go, and certainly capable. They know Nepal well too. They've had two triangular series there in the last couple of years, ranked 25th in the world. Nepal, the second highest ranked team, 17th. And of course, the reigning champions will be looking to go to back-to-back -to -back Asia Cups, having 
had the wonderful experience of playing Pakistan and Pakistan and India and Sri Lanka last year. They acquitted themselves pretty well too, posting 230 in that ODI fixture against India. The might of India, who remember, bowled out Sri Lanka for 50 in that competition. So plenty of promise, plenty of good things happening in the Himalayan nation. They're going to go with the youngster up the top. It'll be Amir Azim, little left arm spinner and packs a punch. And then the class, the elegance and quality of the captain at the non-strikers end. That will be Virendeep Singh fresh into the captaincy. There's Malaysia, who've had their problems in 50-over cricket. They've lost their status there recently, not able to get through the Cricket World Cup Challenge League playoff. On home soil, they've lost their ability to play 50-over cricket in the ICC structures, so they'll have a big fo focus on the T20 game going forward. Definitely their better format. Karen Casey will get things underway. Across to your left there, just as you look, that's Hong Kong taking on Qatar. In the other fixture, the concurrent fixture, Robert Powell gives the fans a clap just to G them up. We've got plenty of them, probably about the best part of 200 Nepali fans. Not sure there's many Malaysians in. And we're all set for the afternoon fixtures. Here we go. Karen Casey with the new ball in his hand. And an immediate appeal. It's pitched outside leg, so it won't be given. But it's got the Nepal fans going already as I wish a warm good afternoon and a welcome along to Mikhail Vaswami, my co-commentator for the first six overs here. Mikhail, great to see you. Entertaining morning. I think we're in for an entertaining afternoon as well. Two good games. First up in the morning in the Group B fixture. And uh, good to see Nepal and Malaysia also battle it out at the Oman Cricket Academy. It's day one of the Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024. Current Casey with the ball right on the money from ball number one. Nepal have had an extended run in India playing some competitive games with the domestic teams. They'll want to bring in all of that in this contest. A little bit of movement, just going to be given as a wide down the leg side. I can't think of too many times that a team w would fly in literally the day before a tournament as important as this one and get straight into action. There are those fans we're talking about, all the colour and the beauty of that unique Nepali flag. But that's what they've done. No training session yesterday. They landed reasonably late. And they love their cricket in Nepal. And they love a certain uh, Andrew Lennart as well. Each time Andrew was walking past them, there was a loud cheer. I was hoping to steer you away from that subject of you conversation. Cannot, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I really, you just wanted to make me blush, didn't you? And as early as the first over of the afternoon contest. Come on, mate. We've got 10 days together. <laughs> right, 10. <laughs> it's just gotten a little bit more breezy now. You can see the gale of breeze. You can see the flags as well. Just gives an indication that the ball will do a bit in the air. And Casey has already shown that. Yeah, I think one of the reasons for that lack of prep in Oman is Monty Desai very much felt the conditions there against Gujarat and Baroda were that good and that similar. They were happy to stay on for the extra couple of days. And interestingly, it was the seamers in the wickets. You often think of Nepal, you think of their spin bowlers. But Karen Casey, Gulshan Jha, Sampal Kami, Very much leading the way, and nearly another one just shy of Sundeep Jura, who's at a backward point. Nine wickets for both KC and Jaff, five for Kami. Good numbers in those five games. They did lose one. That was the dead rubber of the group stages, but they got their hands on the silverware. And certainly, it's a massive year for Nepali cricket, much like Oman, not just trying to get to an Asia Cup, but that World Cup to follow in June. Oh, you're just talking about the breeze and all of a sudden the intensity in the wind has picked up. In the morning it was just about nothing, but look at the flags there to give you an indication. Oh, he pulls this and pulls it to best effect as well. That's a very fine hit from the bat of Amir Azim. He fetches the first boundary for Malaysia and himself. Yeah, really good stroke, wasn't it? Stand and deliver stuff. Only a fraction short, but... Because he's short in stature, think of all the great short batsmen. They have to be good cutters, good pullers. Your Sachin Tendulkar's, your David Warner's. He's even shorter than David Warner, isn't he? He's a little pocket rocket, only five foot two. Mohamed Amir Azim gets a good piece of it, gets the first boundary of the afternoon. And so nearly follows it up with the second. The stumps turn into the 12th fielder. That would have been four. Really nice straight drive. Sometimes you pay the price of playing too straight as well. On that occasion, 
Very elegant looking shot from the bat of Amir Azim. Karan Kesi will have to just be wary with that length because anything short is pulled and everything full is being driven as well. It's very hot outside, but the good thing for the fielders is that it's gotten a little breezy. Nepal will be in search of a wicket very early. Yes, they've changed the field. Long arm goes out now. A little cutter from Karen KC. Gets away with that first over. Could have been worse. Seven runs come from it. Seven for none. Sampal Kami to get things underway from the Emirat end of the ground. Probably the quickest of uh, Nepal seamers, very skiddy operator. One of the great benefits uh, Malaysia will have in this contest, yes, they are the underdogs, of course, in terms of the world rankings. Eight, so eight places separate these two sides, but they're very experienced against Nepal. They've played a lot of cricket against them in recent years. Right, and coming back to Nepal, uh, Andrew, and coming back to Sompal Kami, just churning out some numbers here to add some more perspective. Now, in T20 internationals this year, he's conceded 124 runs in the five innings at an economy of close to 10 with only two wickets. And he'll be eager to redeem himself. He's a class act, no doubt, but it's all about consistency. And in the T20 format, it's all about results and performances, just like any other sport. This will be a good outing, important outing for him. The ball is moving. He likes these conditions. He can be a nippy customer on the given day. Yeah, I think he, he'll hope those numbers just a, a bit of an anomaly. Remarkable try series Nepal, the Netherlands, and Namibia in Kathmandu last month. Really good lengths from Kami here. A little bit of movement as well, actually. More movement than we saw from either of the two sides. The morning contest, depending on I read. Well, he's alive, or isn't he? Gets the crowd going. But certainly, it was an absolute disaster for the bowlers. That try series we saw Yannick Lofty Eaton score the fastest T20I century of all time. 200 plus, I think, went past in six or seven of the innings across the seven match series. Really high scores, and that was in contrast to the low scores and the ODIs that preceded it. Big strokes in Kathmandu, and now big strokes in Muscat. It's been an absolute run fest this wicket. Shiju Sam gets his arms above his head. An almighty strike for six from the Malaysian skipper. Uh, he made it look so easy. Picked the length. And this was a pull off the front foot, remember. More cross batted. But look at the power he's produced on that hit. Virandeep Singh quite certainly will use the long handled best effect. He's donned a new role of promoting himself in the batting order. <laughs> 